What's up, Oasis family? Welcome to Kingdom Culture Talks. Pastor Jody, Pastor Lindsay here. Yes, and our heart behind Kingdom Culture Talks is to help you establish a healthy kingdom culture in your life. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, Oasis family. Welcome to today's episode here at Kingdom Culture Talks. We're going to be talking about a very important topic. Um, I feel like all the topics are like um, really important, um, but this is this may be the most important topic, no joke, of anything we've ever discussed on here. And it is a topic that is not popular, uh, unfortunately, even with a lot of believers. Um, it's kind of like people's last resort when they're going through something. Um, but this right here, if you can get a hold of this, and if we can grow in this together, it will be a game changer for you and for me and for our church. And the topic is this, cultivating a lifestyle of prayer. That's what we're going to talk about today, cultivating a lifestyle of prayer. You want to talk about building kingdom culture in your life? It will not happen without prayer. Yeah. And so uh, my wife, who is an expert on the matter uh, of <laughs> prayer. Wow. Um, I'm kidding, but she is. Uh, she has... Uh, the spirit of intercession on her, um, and really everybody's called to be an intercessor. Mm-hmm. There's not there's not one gift in the Bible that's like you have the gift of intercession. That's right. Everybody's called to be an intercessor, and so um, what is an intercessor? Um, but before we even get into that question, which we need to tap into that, w- let's talk about prayer for a minute. Yeah. How important is prayer? Why should the church pray? And what's the difference between like corporate prayer, private prayer? Uh, we're talking about not just corporately when we gather as a church. We're talking right. about diving in. I have my own relationship with Jesus, and I get bored when I pray. I, I'm sure a lot of people struggle with that. I get bored when I pray. I run out of things to pray. Um, I don't know how to pray. I want to pray. I know I need to pray, but I struggle to pray. I sometimes don't have time to pray. I'm, sometimes I fall asleep while I'm praying. Uh, I get distracted while I'm praying. All these things, I, it, it, I'm, but for real though, I know that's like a lot of people's world. They're yeah. like, I want to, I know I need to, I need to grow. I need to get better. I need to give myself, but how, why I'm not really seeing the benefits of it. So we need to talk about this because the enemy is a liar. Satan's a liar. Yeah. Jesus is amazing and he's the best. And so let's talk about it. What are your thoughts on prayer? You've already unpacked so much just right there what are your in the opening of things that directions we could go in and things we could address with this. But I guess the first couple of things that just pop off in me as you're talking about this is number one, there's the aspect of prayer that's completely engulfed in like intimacy and just adoration and really just the love aspect and the relational aspect that we have with the Lord. So there's like that facet of prayer, just being with him and listening for him and spending time with him. And sometimes there's words and sometimes there's not words. So that's a whole area of prayer. But I think kind of what we are maybe talking more about today is like the fervent prayer of a righteous man. Like when we go into prayer and we're declaring and we're, we're wanting to intercede for particular things, we're wanting to stand in the gap for particular things. One of the things that is just grown me and helped me over the years is having the right perspective and vision on what prayer does, what my prayer does. Talk about that. What does your prayer do? I think do? the problem with why we can get so easily bored or discouraged when we talk about prayer is because we don't value ourselves as like the sons and daughters of God Almighty in the earth. So if we're not valuing the role that we play and the God inside of us, the Holy Spirit inside of us, then of course it's going to feel like, what's the point of me releasing my prayer? But when we see ourselves rightly and we value ourselves rightly, we know when I pray, things are literally happening in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. I am literally establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth just by me praying. Sometimes I see the fruit of that manifest quickly and sometimes I don't see it with my natural eye quickly, but I know either way it's already done in the spirit. So to me that, that was really eye opening when I had that, I guess, revelation or realization really of, oh my goodness, I actually have something to offer. That's why the Lord tells us to pray. So how do we get there where we get past the like beginner stages of prayer? 
how do we get to that place of confidence? Because you're, you're at a place in your walk with the Lord to where you have the vision, you have revelation on what prayer uh, does and what's happening in the spirit realm. How do people tap into that? What's the key to go from, I get bored when I pray, or I run out of things to pray, or I have my checklist, like you're talking about, like very fundamental, like basic things yeah. that like many people know, or like if you're raised Catholic, you know, like you kind of cite whatever you have, the, the priest has you cite, or whatever that whole um, denomination's like, um, you know, you confess your sins to a, a guy called, right. called a father, um, and uh, it's like just, there's just a whole, that's just one particular well, denomination. What? Re- realizing there's yeah. no formula, and a lot of us, I think especially early on, we just want to be told exactly what to do and exactly what to say, exactly how to do it. And I think the most simplest thing is just walking with Holy Spirit and being led with Holy Spirit. You know, we did a few podcasts a few weeks in a row on how to hear the voice of God, and that those would be good to listen to as well. I feel like in the earlier on days, and I still do this quite often, but just when I was really learning how to press in and be an intercessor, a lot of times I start out with reading the Word and seeing what the Lord speaks to me in the Word, and then that kind of directs what I'm praying into now. So how do you know what God's speaking to you through the word, right? Because you can read a I lot. I guess you just have a... What's, what's an easy way? Something leaps out. It's like you're reading the page and all of a sudden something just... Leaps like out it's leaps highlighted out. to you and it just leaps off the page to you. And you're like, I've read this 10 times before. I've heard this before. But today there's something different about it. It's yeah. like... From the inside out, I'm leaping. It's like the words are leaping off the page, and I've just learned to recognize, okay, I think the Lord is speaking to me about this. It's like uh, Holy Spirit has his own highlighter. He highlights something yeah. for you. Yeah, and you're like, Whoa. It's like a spiritual highlighter. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, funny, we were talking about prayer today, but earlier this week I was reading in Jeremiah, um, yesterday actually, and Jeremiah 9, it's talking about, Jeremiah is talking about gather the weepers, gather the mourners, <laughs> gather the, basically the wailers and the intercessors. That's the only solution for the state of the world. That's what Jeremiah was talking about. But as I was reading that, it was like, it's almost like the Lord was prophesying it all over again to me. Gather the weepers, gather the intercessors. It was leaping off the page to me. And so I just began to declare that and actually the word it said was summon the weepers summon the intercessors summon the wailers and so my prayer time yesterday quite a bit was just declaring that word of the lord god wake us up with the spirit of intercession let the the women of god arise in prayer and get a hold of this some of it okay there is like a a self-discipline part of like you actually have to force yourself to say no to other things and so sit down Let's and talk about pray. that. So prayer needs to be taken just like an appointment you would make with somebody. Sure. So it's like if, if That's we a don't, very practical. Yeah, if we don't have appointments yeah. in our life to connect with the Lord, um, I love what Apostle said is it's like, you know, driving down your car and praying, okay, you can do that, but that's not intimacy. You know, like, like intimacy is like when you're going intentionally into your prayer closet, right? We, we say this phrase, prayer closet. It could be an actual yeah. closet. It could be your living room. <laughs> I go off and into our actual closet. <laughs> it could be your car, but just not while you're driving. It could be like you need yeah. separation and you need to go into your car yeah. and just sit there in silence for an hour. When you're or not half focused silence. on yeah. the speed limit and yep. the car's beside you, yep. you're given complete and total focus. Yes. And I love to go to like my front or back porch, yeah. but even that can be distracting. There are times where you got to go in and you got to shut yourself up in the presence oh, yeah. of God. So what does that look like? That, that could very well look like you turn on some worship music that has oil on it. It's anointed worship music. Yeah. It's not just your favorite song. It's not just like good old classic worship music. It's like, no, there's oil on it. Well, I know often for both of us, we like to have Christian music that doesn't have words yep. when we go into can prayer. can be piano, just synth, instrumental. Because yeah. it's one, you know especially if you are easily distracted or you're a singer or a musician or whatever, yep. then you are trying to pray, but then you're focused on, okay, the 
the song and the words of the song. And sometimes that's good. God can speak to you yep. through that. But that's just kind of a personal preference that we have in our home. Most songs have a theme to them. And you are that, that the point of the song is to get you connected <laughs> to the theme and the word of God and connected yeah. to Christ through that theme. And that could be that Holy Spirit's not speaking that particular right. thing to you. So when you're listening to a worship song that has lyrics to it, it, it doesn't mean it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not good. It's just not what Holy Spirit is wanting to say. Or know? there's sometimes so, like, I know for both of us in prayer, the Lord will bring up a song yeah. in our spirit and he'll be like, listen to this song. And that's a way he, all, yeah. you know, you turn that song on and it has lyrics or whatever. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit is speaking to you through that. I'll wake up in the morning with a song. Yeah. And so that's like an indicator. Okay. Holy Spirit wants me to go listen to that song. So I'll go into our prayer room and I'll turn it on and listen to it. Sometimes I'll have it on repeat and um, I'm just letting it absorb, you know, into my soul and my spirit. I think as as far as some practical things, you know, sometimes you have dreams and so that's fresh on your mind. And so that's kind of something that you bring into when you go into prayer or sometimes you go into prayer and a lot of times... Like I said, I'll start out reading something in the Word, but a lot of times I'll just start out praying in the Spirit, praying in my heavenly language and tongues. And as you're praying and you're just spending that time stirring up your spirit man, Holy Spirit sometimes begins to bring things to your attention. But there's also times, like right now, going on in our world, there's these major hurricanes and flooding or the state of the church that we're in, like our local church, things that we know that are going on, things families are dealing with, or like the election is coming up. So then there are times that there's certain things the Lord will just put the, not, not really a burden, but like, quicken yeah, he pray. quickens you, pray into this, declare the word of God over this. And I think one of the fundamental things, because I used to do this a lot, I used to pray a lot out of fear and almost like begging the Lord to come through. And I had to learn that is like me praying out of fear. Weeping and interceding is not weeping from fear. Weeping and interceding is because you're feeling the heartbeat of God and you're praying in union and partnership with the heartbeat of God. But praying out of fear doesn't move him and it's an ineffective prayer. So that's kind of a difference. Um, Prayer, bottom line, with your personal prayer life, prayer is just letting the Holy Spirit lead your prayer time. That's right. It's going in with no agenda. But whatever the Holy Spirit yeah. has on his mind, on his heart for you that day. Yeah. So an easy way to tap into that is go in to your prayer closet, wherever that is, and just begin to worship God. Just say, Jesus, you're good. Father, you're awesome. You're holy. Just worship him and then pray in the Holy Spirit. Yes. And you don't, you don't have to pray loud. Yeah. I hardly ever pray loud. Um, I know we have intercessors here that they are just so passionate. And they know how to uh, pray very intently. Yeah. And I love that. Um, I can do that. Um, I have done that. But oftentimes in my own personal prayer life, it's just like I'll even pray in tongues. And some may not agree with this, but I'll pray in tongues um, like underneath my breath. Because even when I pray in tongues, it will distract me mentally from hearing the Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. So when I hear myself pray in tongues, you know my brain will start hearing what I'm saying and it's like it distracts me. So I'll just pray in tongues quietly and I'll just sit there and meditate on the Holy Spirit and what he wants to say while I'm praying in tongues. So it may be different for you. You may need to shout and pray and all that. That's fine. But for me, it's just like, it's like, yeah, (laughs) it's just like real quiet. But Not because I feel like the Lord's not hearing me. If I get loud or passionate or intense, Really, that's just because that passion is coming up out well, of me. It's not yeah. It's not attached to like the volume and I have to pray yeah. loud or this prayer doesn't count exactly. at all. It's just like, that's, that's exactly just a it. natural. It's coming out of passion. This is just coming out of like, this but is what's, there's times what's coming out. You go to war in the spirit and it's like, there's times I go to war and yeah. it's really intense. There's times. And I'm praying in tongues very intense. Pray, there's many times I've gone into my prayer closet. We have this bench in our actual closet and I have prayed a lot of prayers on my face right there. But, but the point I was making is a lot of times when I go in there, I don't even have words and I don't even pray in the spirit. Sometimes it's just a groan 
And I just feel the Holy Spirit, even right now, I could be weeping right now in prayer. I feel Him so strong. But sometimes the Bible talks about just releasing groanings and weepings before the Lord. That's well, like I have that verse right here, and I want to read it. And you're dead on. I, I believe there's different levels of prayer. I, I don't mean to like get people mentally trapped up in their mind of like, what level of prayer am I at? Right. But I do believe it's only the Holy Spirit that can lead us into these deeper levels of prayer. Yeah. We can't we can't make these deeper levels of prayer happen. You yeah. can't just sit there and go, oh, and start groaning. Yeah. Like, that's not going to do nothing anything. Nothing about prayer can be forced. No. It's, it really is like this dance with the Holy Spirit where He's leading. It's a conversation. And we're just like along for the ride. And we're quiet when He says, be quiet. We listen when He says, listen. We release when He says, release. And we pray the yeah. word. This is, we'll have to do a part two on this. This is <laughs> so really good. good. I love it. Uh, I want to read this verse and we're going to wrap up today's episode. And I really hope there's some practicals that we share with you that will just help you in your personal prayer life, making this a lifestyle. Don't ma- Prayer was never meant to be difficult. It was never meant to be challenging. It was just our, our old man, our old man hates prayer. And so you have to keep crucifying that old man. You got to make sure that thing is dead or else you will be distracted. And the enemy will try to do everything he can to keep us from getting into that place of prayer because prayer is literally the most powerful force on the earth. The sons and daughters of God have, we have the most powerful nuclear bomb, if you will, weapon in our hands. And a lot of times we're just sitting here doing nothing with it because we're distracted, we're busy, we're bored. We're we, worn out, whatever we're, yeah, our excuses we're tired. are. Yeah, it's like we wake up too late. we got to rush to work. We yeah. get home. We're tired. We want to spend time with our family. We yeah. don't want our kids to be neglected, all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I mean, there's value in all of, like, making sure that your family's taken care of and you spend time with them. But It's the if, answer. If it's not are, a last resort. Exactly. It is the answer. If we're going to be mature sons and daughters of God, it don't happen without prayer. Yeah. It will not happen without prayer. And I would say this. I would say go into prayer with no agenda and go into prayer and just oftentimes more than you pray in English, I would encourage you to pray in the Spirit. Yeah. Because praying in the Spirit is praying the perfect will of the yes. Lord. And so when you pray His perfect will, you can't go wrong doing that. Mm-hmm. And there's things yeah, in your heart you want to share with God. Mm-hmm. Share those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, you know when you tapped into prayer. I like yeah. what somebody said, um, a minister a long time ago said, you, you tapped into prayer. He's either talking about prayer or worship, but it, it applies for both. But you, you know you tapped into the spirit of prayer when you have forgotten that you're praying. Mm. And you're just like, you're just praying. You're just like communing with yes. the Holy Spirit. And that's what this is about. And Romans 8 defines this for us. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. God is so good at getting us out of our own bubble, our own little selfish world, and bringing us into his world. Mm -hmm. And like you said, he'll put things on our heart. The other day I got emotional praying for America Mm -hmm. and revival coming to this nation Um, on our front porch. Mm -hmm. Just got emotional, just praying. I might've been in our prayer room, but nonetheless, just man, like it's like God will begin to breathe on something. And it's like, yeah, I I wasn't waking up planning to pray for this, but I can't help but pray for this. Or God puts somebody on your heart and you, I'm I'll wrap up with this story. This is a pretty cool story. I want you to be thinking about an exercise for the church um, okay. to do this week. But um, Kenneth Hagin tells this amazing story, and I don't have all the details memorized, but there was a couple who the wife got up in the middle of the night one night, and um, she had this like urgency uh, to pray in the Holy Spirit, I think. And um, so she's praying in the Holy Spirit. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she had this urgency to wake up and pray, nonetheless. Um, so she prays and she goes back to bed and then she woke up again with an urgency to pray. And so she got up again and prayed and eventually her husband said, babe, why do you keep getting up? She said, I just, 
uh, I guess it was like I have this urgency basically mm -hmm. to pray. And so he got up and prayed with her. And, uh, but she didn't know what it was, what the urgency was about. She didn't yeah. know. And so he got up with her, I think, a couple of times and prayed. Well, they knew of a church that took a trip in a church van. Um, and they thought, okay, they're driving back from this trip. Maybe we need to pray for their safety. Maybe that's why God has yeah. us up. So they prayed for them. Um, long story short, um, you have to hear Kenneth Hagin share it because obviously he knows all the details of it. But they found out that that next day, there was a guy who um, was a believer, went to work, and um, he, he had this job. Uh, I, for, I forget what the job even was, but nonetheless, one of the co-workers didn't show up, and his job was to go up on top of this tall, um, tall... Uh, like electrical pole? pole so, yeah, some kind of pole. And um, he got up there, and, um, and then shortly after came right back down. And he didn't stay up there. And um, he said, he said, I had a dream last night. And this is why, this is the same night I believe that that couple was praying, had that urgency mm -hmm. to pray. And maybe they went to church together. I don't remember the details. But nonetheless, he said, I got up there. And he said, but last night I had a dream that I was up here on this pole. And there was a cable up there. And that cable snapped and, and uh, mm -hmm. cut my head off. And he said, so I had to come back down. Well, there was another coworker there. Um, who said, well, I'm not somebody that, you know, is like suspicious of stuff like this, you know, mm -hmm. or superstition. Yeah. I'm not one that gives into superstition. And so he said, I'll go up there. And so he went up there and sure enough, that cable snapped and mm -hmm. cut that man's head off. And, um, but it, it goes back to this couple that night waking up, having an urgency to pray. And it was because of their prayers that this guy got this dream of him going to work that day and him being yeah, killed saved his life. and it saved his life. So that's just like on a personal level right. of what prayer can do. And then you have like the global side, yeah. the nation side, the church side. So radical story. If God wakes you up to pray, <laughs> yes. man, it is so important that we yeah. listen to that. And that's something that I know I can grow in mm -hmm. um, and being more discerning and sensitive to as well. So, so what do you got to wrap up? today's episode. Well, I would just say this, and then I'll give you guys a exercise for this week. Um, prayers that are really good to pray often are those of repentance and those of God transforming, humbling ourselves, repenting, covering me by the blood, transforming, make me look more like you, help me to die to my flesh, help me to just, you know, be delivered from anything and everything. Heal any part of me that needs to be healed. I think a lot of times we get so focused on praying for all the various things that we don't pray for ourselves very much because we're praying for our kids. We're praying for the nation. We're praying for whatever. We're trying to get prophetic words. And it's like sometimes we just need to slow down and say, Lord, just make me like you. Yeah. At the end of the day, I just want to look like you. And those kind of just really simplistic foundational prayers are life changing. And he responds to them. But our exercise for the week, I would say this. If you're not making intentional time, setting intentional time aside already for prayer, you can't cultivate a lifestyle of prayer if you're not go if you're not setting aside intentional time. A lot of people do that time first thing in the morning when they wake up. If you need to wake up earlier to get started with your day, that probably is going to involve you going to bed earlier so that you can wake up earlier. Yep. We personally in our house, we like to pray in the morning. We like to start the day out with the Lord. Most mornings I try to tell the Lord Good morning. I'll say good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Abba Father. Good morning, Jesus. And I just want to start my day with communicating with him. And so I would say that's part one is look at your schedule and make time in your schedule and sacrifice time in your schedule. Sacrifice a little bit of sleep to make intentional time. Number two, I would say this. This has been really helpful for us. Carve out an intentional place somewhere at your home that is the place where you go to meet God. Not that you can't meet Him everywhere else, but I just think it helps with really like good. knowing yeah. I have a place where I go and I get away and I can close myself off with just the Lord. You don't have to have a mansion and a you know, five levels of temples and prayer rooms and altar spaces in your home. But even if it's just a corner of a closet, 
where you can tuck away or like he said, if you have to go in your car, but that's the place where you go to have alone time or your back porch or whatever. We have consecrated areas of our of our home where it's like, this is where I'm going to meet the Lord. So give me some time here. And I just think that that is a really good thing and really helpful. So I love it. Jesus said, close the door when you go into prayer. Shut the door behind you. And he's talking about, you may not have a literal door to close, but he's talking about eliminate all distractions. Yeah, this so one mainly focus. is a big one. Uh, that's and such a big one. A lot of times I will not read my Bible app like if I'm going deep into prayer because I know I'm going to be looking at my phone and looking at notifications and stuff. So just it's it's a big deal. Take an hour and yeah. don't take your phone with you. You may say, I don't even have the desire to pray, but you're a Christian. And I would say this, pray what I heard a minister say, Daniel Kalinda. He said, Lord, put that desire in me yeah. to want to pray. And um, start there. So Lord, put that desire in me to even want to pray. Not that you're always going to feel like praying, and I think that's like the big part of it. You're not yeah. always going to feel like praying. That's okay. That's just your flesh and your soul wanting what it wants, but you don't give it always what it wants. So Think about how important it is that even Jesus would go away to pray yep. and be alone with the Father. King Jesus. And the Bible God says himself he went would get away alone. often. Yeah. And it, it, said no to people. Said no to he distractions. He went away often, but it doesn't say he went away every morning at 7 a.m. Yeah. He just went away often. It could have been morning, could have been night. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. It's like there's no Whenever he calls. Exactly. There's no like yeah. formula to this. It's just if you truly love Jesus, you know, it's like this. It's like, you know, people may say, I don't have time to pray. I say, you can't afford to not make time to pray. Mm -hmm. Like like prayer is so important. So prayer can save yeah. your life. Prayer can save your marriage. It can save you from committing adultery, committing a crime. It can save you with all, all, from all kinds of things. Yeah. So let's pray. Father, I thank mm -hmm. you that you are teaching us how to pray. Yes. You care about um, what we pray. Um, and you, you care about bringing us into levels of intimacy with you. This isn't a formula. This is not a religious thing to do. This is not like, you know, saying four Hail Marys and uh, like just having some nice little thing that we memorize. This is about relationship with you, Abba Father, through your Son, by your Holy Spirit. And so we say, Holy Spirit, take us on this journey, on this ride to cultivate a lifestyle of prayer. And I, I just speak that over everybody listening and watching this right now, even over my wife and I, that you will increase all of us in creating and cultivating a lifestyle of intimate prayer yes. with you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for checking out this week's episode. We love you. And until next time, be an oasis wherever you are.